So for the past week, you've been voting on what story you think should be crowned the most bizarre local news story of 2020. The requirements, it had to be strange, surreal, or just downright ridiculous. And there were oh so many to choose from. So we have tallied all the votes and we're ready to count down the top 10. All right, number 10 was straight out of a sci-fi movie as these suited up superheroes went on the hunt for a super villain, the Asian giant hornet, better known as the murder hornet. The first murder hornet nest was found in Blaine back in October after scientists, take a look at that, captured one of the murderous little thugs and fitted it with a teeny tiny tracking device. Number nine takes us down to Pierce County where outgoing councilwoman Pam Roach co-sponsored a bill to break up the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department only to, at the very last moment, cast the deciding vote against her own proposal, much to the shock of her colleagues. Yes, Councilmember Roach? No. What? Wait a minute. Councilmember Young? What? I think that I made the right choice based on the priorities that I think the voters have in my district. And I think that I telegraphed this to people I think they never asked how I was going to vote. I think they never asked if I wanted, you know, to do any of the amendments. They went on and did it themselves. Nobody called to ask me. They just, what am, what am I, just a, a, a token sitting there? I don't think so. So if you think that about Pam Roach, you're really not thinking. Wait a minute. Councilmember Young? What? All right, next. To the streets of Seattle's Capitol Hill, or rather to the short-lived autonomous zone, first known as CHAZ, later known as CHOP. We're gonna have more on this later on in our car countdown. But as demonstrators took over six square blocks of the city and forced police to abandon their East Precinct, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin gave us number eight in our list of bizarre headlines. How long do you think Seattle in those few blocks looks like this? I don't know, we could have the summer of love. Have the summer of love. The summer of love. Yeah. And you have a mayor that doesn't know she's alive. She's talking about it's going to be a love fest this summer. Well, tell that to the police who was supposed to be in that precinct. Summer of love and underrated. I couldn't believe that came in on number eight. Thought it would be much higher. All right, number seven on our list of bizarre local stories takes us back to May 30th in downtown Seattle. As a riot unfolded in downtown Seattle, our Q13 Fox crew found itself thrust into the headlines after our security guard, that guy there, a Marine veteran, sprang into action, disarming not one, but two rioters of stolen police rifles. Whoa. The thought was, I need to take that. I need to get control of that. That is a police firearm. I snatched him, I told him to get out of here. He was just stunned, flat out stunned. Through firearms experience and training and instructing, I knew they didn't know what they were doing. You know what they say, once a Marine, always a Marine. Our next story is, I think, less bizarre than it is ridiculous. As Seattle's council rushed to defund the police department under pressure from protesters, their half-baked efforts at addressing racial justice resulted in the resignation of the first black woman to serve as the city's police chief, Carmen Best. Her abrupt departure comes in at number six. Honestly, um, the idea of letting FDV work so incredibly hard to make sure that our department was diverse, that reflects the community that we serve, to just turn that all on a dime and hack it off without having a plan in place to move forward, it's, it's highly distressful for me. And I really, you know, it goes against my principles and my conviction, and I, and I really couldn't do it. All right, as promised, our countdown brings us back to CHOP which made several appearances on our countdown. In an upset, you voters knocked Seattle's autonomous experiment out of the running for our most bizarre local news story of 2020, instead landing it at number five. But I was like, gosh, there's no way. Uh, but perhaps that's because the whole ordeal, when all was said and done, was maybe a little bit more sad than it was strange. Move over murder hornets, maggot apples, take the number four spot. On our countdown, do you remember this one? In September, Governor Jay Inslee gifted apples grown at the governor's mansion to residents in wild, far-ravished eastern Washington. But it turns out that 
he violated state law in the process when he brought those maggot larvae infested apples across county lines. Number three on our list might be the most rage inducing of all. And again, another one I was surprised didn't make it into the top two. I really thought our top two contenders after all of you guys voted was going to be Chaz Chop and this next story. As the work, uh, out of work Washingtonians struggled to get unemployment benefits at the onset of the pandemic, there was at least one group that had no problem at all getting money from the state. The Employment Security Department announcing that it was duped into sending more than a half billion dollars, half a billion dollars, to Nigerian scammers. The agency's director, Susie Levine, became the face of trying to defend the screw up. There is an inherent tension between reducing the friction to getting benefits out to claimants in a timely fashion and increasing the friction for criminals to keep them from perpetrating fraud on our systems and on our people. All right, and the number two most bizarre local news story of 2020, as voted on by you, the viewer. <laughs> this one again, take the kids out of the room. I can't believe I have to say this, uh, this is on air again. Take the kids out of the room because the number two top story of 2020 takes us to Instagram, where the Seattle King County Health Department had some creative advice to help you keep your sex life going during COVID. The county suggesting you should go to a Lowe's Home Improvement store, buy a shower curtain, cut a hole in it, and well, I think you know where that is going. Well, I didn't expect the county's glory hole advice to rank so high on the list. Apparently, a lot of you found it interesting, as did I, that the government could get creative about helping people have sex but couldn't use an ounce of creativity to find ways to keep businesses open during the pandemic. All right, so we have made it all the way to number one. Governor, I'd like to ask you about what's going on in Seattle. There's this uh, thing called the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. What's your thought on that? The fact that the protesters have taken that over and not allowing people to come and go freely? And then, well, regarding the National Guard. Well, that's news to me, so I'll have to reserve any comment about it. I, I have not, I have not heard anything about that from any credible source. <laughs> not that you're not credible. It's just like before I espouse an opinion, I should know of which I speak. Ah, yes, Governor Jay Inslee pretending to be blissfully unaware of Seattle's occupied protest zone. As it captured the nation's attention, the place first known as Chaz and later known as CHOP was apparently news to our governor, even two days after the occupation of six blocks in the state's largest city began. Well, that's news to me, so I'll have to reserve any comment about it. I, I, have, not, I have not heard anything about that from any credible source. <laughs> not that you're not credible, it's just like before I espouse an opinion, I should know of which I speak. And the story only got more bizarre from there. When asked months later about those comments during a debate, the governor's early memories of CHOP were suddenly crystal clear. What should voters make of the fact that you were apparently oblivious to police abandoning an entire precinct in the state's larger city? You have one minute, 15 seconds. Yeah, well, listen, if you look at the facts of that situation, I could not have been oblivious to it because I actually deployed the Washington State National Guard. Sir, then why do you, why do you say you did not know about it? I, you'll have to go back and, and look at some quote. I can't comment on the quote right now. This is news to me. You went on to say, I haven't heard about it from any credible source. Nearly two days after CHOP happened, you're now saying you did know about CHOP. Uh, listen, I can't tell you, I knew about CHOP. That's why we had state troopers ready to respond at the city's request. So which was it you demanded to know? Did he lie in June or did he lie in the debate? The ending of 2020's most bizarre local story was not yet written. And so, again, we tried. So what is the reality of your knowledge of that situation two days after it happened when you were asked about it? Well, obviously I knew about a disturbance on Capitol Hill. The whole state knew about that disturbance, so actually I knew about it. And the situation is I had not received as much current information up to date that I would like to have had before I made some big pronouncement. I will admit, I was surprised at first that this story ended up at the top of our list, given how many just bizarre things happened this year. You actually voted that Governor Inslee lying about CHOP was more bizarre than even the existence of CHOP itself. To me, that seemed odd. 
Because private citizens trying to take over a government building and setting up a police-free zone is really quite bizarre. A, pol a politician telling a lie? That's not very bizarre at all. That happens all the time. But then I realized something. I realized why you actually voted for this story. It wasn't the lie that was bizarre. It was the fact that he thought you were dumb enough to believe it. Well, that's news to me, so I'll have to reserve any comment about it. I, I, have, not, I have not heard anything about that.